Dear friends and followers, today I'll be talking about a very important topic, all you need to know about fuel figures. So let's get started. Now a lot of passengers have the impression that pilots fuel up the aircraft as if they would fuel up their car. Fuel hose in and just go for it. But that is not true. On most flights you only fuel up the plane with the amount of fuel you need for the trip to get to your destination. And a little bit more in case that you have to alternate to another aerodrome and some more to comply with flight regulations. So let's imagine this is our fuel tank and we would be flying from Dusseldorf to Faro, Portugal. So regarding our flight plan, we need this amount of trip fuel. So let's put that into the tank. Now what exactly determines trip fuel? The trip fuel is the fuel you need from the point of takeoff, climb, cruise flight, descent, approach and until touchdown at your destination. So more or less you can say it's the fuel from A to B. But that for sure wouldn't be enough. You never know how much the wind would might shift during that flight, thunderstorms you might have to circumnavigate and maybe the air traffic controller won't let you climb to the requested flight level and you're flying at the lower level resulting in a higher fuel consumption and therefore you add a so-called contingency fuel which must either be 5% of the trip fuel or a minimum of 5 extra minutes which is also mandatory by law. I'm going to have to make another video only about contingency fuel and alternate fuel because there are a few more facts you need to know about. Okay, now let's imagine you're on final approach at Faro and a preceding aircraft has blocked the runway due to a burst tire. Then what? <laughs> you would have to perform a go around and you wouldn't be able to land at your destination. Therefore, you add the so-called alternate fuel into your tank. The alternate fuel will get you to your alternate aerodrome which you have chosen during your briefing. So the missed approach at Faro is part of the alternate fuel plus the climb, cruise and descent and approach to the alternate aerodrome. So in our case our alternate airport is Sevilla in Spain. Now you're in approach to Sevilla and the tower controller says Air Joe 125 go around, the runway is blocked because the runway inspection car has just broken down. Okay I admit you are really having a really bad day as it is and now this. Okay so let's recapture, the trip fuel is used up, the contingency and the alternate fuel. So what's left? There's so called final reserve fuel which is regulated by law and must be a minimum of 30 minutes flying time at 1500 feet over the aerodrome the holding speed. So Sevilla has 30 minutes to get the car from the runway and you will be number one for approach because you will have declared a fuel emergency as soon as you start using the final reserve fuel. Now pilots have the option to add some extra fuel at their own discretion and there are many reasons for extra fuel. If you are familiar with the airport and you know that the rush hour is just at your arrival time, you might want to add a little extra just for maybe a holding or long transitions. Or if there are many isolated thunderstorms predicted on your route, you might want to add a little extra just to have some reserve so you don't immediately have to divert. But keep in mind, adding more fuel will increase the fuel flow due to the more weight you're going to be have to flying around with. And last but not least, you need taxi fuel. That's the fuel getting you from the gate position to the runway. But not only that, it's also considered to fuel the auxiliary power units for air conditioning and engine start. And you can add a little more extra taxi fuel if you feel the need, especially during winter operation in case your airplane needs to get de-iced, which will extend your taxi time and your fuel burn by a good 15 minutes. So adding up all the fuel figures will give you the so-called block fuel. 
the fuel which you will have on board at the parking position before the blocks are removed and you're ready for engine start. Okay, this was a basic introduction into the fuel chapter of a jet airplane. I must admit there are a few more details to learn about the contingency, alternate and final reserve fuel, but more sort of legal regulations. For example, if your destination airport has two or more runways, different procedures apply, such as en route alternates and weather minimas. But more about that in another video. I hope I was able to answer another aviation related question for you. Please be so kind to share the video with your Facebook friends and make sure to subscribe my channel and follow me for great aviation pictures on my Instagram account. So see you soon. All the best, uh, farewell, your Captain Joe. A great tip for future pilots, start practicing to convert kilograms to pounds and vice versa because for example in the US fuel figures are given in pounds and in most European countries in kilograms and not in liters. <laughs> That's got to do with the density of the fuel but more about that in another video. Bye! -bye.